everyone. My name is Ryan Schell. I'm the Chief Fire Prevention Officer for Century York Fire Services, uh, the fire department that proudly protects the communities of Newmarket and Aurora, Ontario. We're here today on our YouTube channel with Scott Pugsley, uh, professor and industry coordinator for Seneca College, right. uh, Fire Protection Engineering Technology. Uh, thanks for being here, Scott, on our show. Thanks very much, Chief. I appreciate the time to, uh, to talk about everything fire sprinkler related. Great, great. And uh, we're here today with three questions for Scott on uh, what you can see in the background here, sprinkler systems. So first question, Scott, uh, what's the difference between a commercial industrial type sprinkler system and uh, residential sprinklers? Well, probably the most obvious one is what they're trying to protect, right? With not one system protecting all things, uh, all things well, we have to recognize that what we would find in a mall or in a storage facility is not the same as what you and I are going to have in our homes. So that affords us the option of really customizing a system. They are all customized, but we want to make sure that the difference is that it's protecting the hazard the right way. And that brings in so many advantages for us when we smart size systems and not have them protecting a warehouse if it's my living room. There's no need to. What are some of the myths out there? Oh geez, well, there's a lot of them. Um, I would invite anybody to go onto YouTube and type in sprinkler myths, but um, you know, Hollywood shows so many of them wrong. Um, all sprinklers operating at the exact same time is probably my, my favorite, disfavorite, yeah. if there's such a thing. Um, sprinklers are individually heat activated. Uh, Chief, they, they don't activate by smoke. Um, they're durable, they're rugged, but what you see from Hollywood is, um, in almost every case, uh, completely fabricated. Uh, it's not that way. You can't operate a pull station in a restaurant and have all the sprinklers operate. Um, it just doesn't work that way. So we try to, uh, through all the stuff I do at the college, we try to educate students um, and guests as often as we can about what's right and what's wrong with the technology. And there's a lot of myths out there. Uh, and we try to clear them up as much as we can. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. So what are some of the benefits of uh, home fire sprinklers, residential home fire sprinklers? Well, I suppose the obvious one is that you're going to protect your family and your property uh, the best way you can. Um, that's a big benefit, but that's a simple one, right? The benefits could be much more far-reaching to communities. Um, and I think if I remember right, you, did a, you were involved with a community recently. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 109 uh, fully detached residential homes in Aurora, Ontario. We were very, very uh, excited to work with the home builder. We worked collaboratively with them on getting that in, for the homes. Right. And, um, you know, we didn't do it alone. We, uh, we worked with great community partners like yourself at Seneca. We reached out to you, uh, knowing that your knowledge and background on sprinklers and uh, it really helped us with the project. Again, the Home Fire Sprinkler Coalition uh, yeah. had materials that were just, uh, just phenomenal for whether you're a resident or a home builder, yeah. even a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. And, um, it basically gave you all the benefits of what home fire sprinklers can be for your home. Yeah, that's, it's wildly important when you think of the purchase of a house. Um, as I as I've said to, to many people, it's the most expensive purchase. And when you think about that, you're going to want to make as much of an effort to educate yourself for uh, carpet enhancements yeah. as you would for something that can save your life. Yeah. And that's major, right? At the end of the day, you can have that added very simply, new construction or even in retrofits, yeah. uh, and that protection and peace of mind yeah. is um, probably the best money you'll spend compared to what I could ever use a kitchen improvement for. Yeah. I know as a fire investigator, when I show up uh, at, a, at a house after a house fire, yeah. I see the amount of water that an aerial fire truck can put on a house fire. Right. Uh, what's the difference when it comes to sprinkler systems? Uh, compared to your basement being full of water from a fire truck, uh, how much is a, a residential sprinkler system putting on a, on a house fire on average? So on average, you're looking at about 15 gallons a minute. Now that works out to be an eighth to a tenth of the water that's used for an initial fire attack. Yeah. Um, now I'm saying that from my own experience being a, a former volunteer firefighter many years ago, but seeing the contrast, yeah. um, there's a, a couple little mottos we have. Uh, you can dry something out, you can't unburn it. And the significance, the fire service has a disadvantage. You're arriving seven to 10 minutes after the fire's already started. So when you have a seven to 10 minute delay, the fire is doubling in size every minute. That's basic fire science. And if it doubles in size every minute, we get a, a sense for how large it could be. And a fire sprinkler will operate within, in most cases, the first minute. Yeah. So simple, 
you know, what's going to be applied first? It's, you know, the fastest water. That's one of those saying that's used, uh, and you can't unburn things. That's right. Um, earliest application is going to be the best. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So very little water. Out. One to two sprinkler heads may be operated? You know, it's interesting. 85% of all house fires, uh, one sprinkler puts them out. Wow. And the, like those stats, uh, one in 16 million failure rate. So the odds of the sprinkler system in this, in this lab or in this building just spontaneously failing is one in 16 million. Yeah. When you start to think about the facts and the data, one in 16 million completely dispels my thought that it's going to go off by accident. Yep. Right? When you think about the, the effectiveness, I'm going to have one directly over where the heat was being produced go off. Not smoke, not an aerosol, not popcorn. But it's locally applying the water directly to where it's needed. It's not my entire house. And it happens in the first minute. Yep. So we need all of those safety systems in place. We need to have early detection with smoke alarms, right? That will alert the family. We need to have sprinkler systems to suppress it quickly. And we need the fire service to get there to make sure that everybody's out of the house, to continue the investigation, and to do broader property protection. It's multiple layers. Yeah. Um, there's not going to be one fix for everything. Yeah. I wish there, if there was one fix for everything fire related, yeah. we would have found it already. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But, you know, I described to my students that the comparison for fire safety can be equated to the car industry. You have um, standards for car assembly. They're crash tested, they're rigorous standards, and we want to make sure that we buy cars that have got all those tests. Um, well, when you think about a house, we have building code and fire codes that home builders uh, achieve and build them successfully to that same set of standards. So we've got some, some parity there. But when we think about accidents still happening, we have seat belts. Seat belts are sort of the equivalent of smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors. It's another layer of protection. Accidents still happen. Yeah. And those accidents can be prevented maybe by adding an airbag to your car. Well, an airbag could be a fire sprinkler system. So the more levels of safety systems that we can have correctly applied and used, it's going to give us, of course, better protection for those accidents. It's, they're an accident for a reason. Um, I've had two near misses in my own house, fire related. Now, a fire professor having a fire in his own home would be awful. A fire in anyone's home is awful. So let me kind of back that statement up. But I've almost had two fires in my own house for stuff, right? My daughter was dancing in the living room. She shook the light bulb out of the socket in our basement. The socket was starting to arc. And she wouldn't go into the basement because she thought it was haunted. <laughs> But the light was going on and off intermittently because she had danced so much on the floor that the light bulb had come loose and it was starting to arc in the outlet. Yeah. It's not her fault. No. It's not the builder's fault. But things like that can initiate an ignition source. So it's not anyone's fault necessarily, but we have to look at protecting us from our accidents. We have new cars have all these bells and whistles, collision avoidance systems, but at the end of the day, Someone is going to make a mistake, and if we can have something there that can intercept that as fast as possible, like a seatbelt, like an airbag, we're going to be much better off. Yeah. The technology for fire sprinklers has grown a lot. Well, fire safety in general has grown a lot, right? We've got, uh, you're using drones for yeah. on scene, uh, for fire investigations. Yeah. We're finally at a point, I think, where we're using technology for our use. Yeah rather than have technology beat us over the heads for you know, remaining connected and all that stuff, maybe our connections are better now. Yeah. Uh, another question there. So this is basically what we're seeing for a commercial industrial system here, Scott. Mm -hmm. What would you see in someone's home? What would be the differences uh, looking at, at sprinklers in someone's home? Right. Well, the obvious one is going to be size, right? The size of a system like this would protect, you know, a small plaza, you know, an office building. Uh, just size and scale is going to be the most significant differences, uh, as well as materials. So because they're protecting different types of buildings, um, the fire sprinklers that we actually use are going to be a little bit different. The materials that they can use are different. Uh, and those differences have been honed over the last 40 years plus to use the materials that are going to be the most effective for that application, right? We have 16 of these risers in this lab. Um, all of them protect a type of building and a type of environment a little differently. 
Um, the residential ones are much, much smaller, much simpler, uh, and the inspections can be done by the homeowner. Right? The maintenance can be done by the homeowner. The, the information from the Home Fire Sprinkler Coalition walks a homeowner through how to do that, the basic maintenance. Yeah. The differences are big with the mindset of you know, physical equipment. They still discharge water the same, heat only, yeah. over a certain area of activation. Yeah. Um, and the sprinkler that you would have in your home will not distribute the same amount of water that would be, say, at a warehouse. Sometimes they're even concealed, right? Right. Yeah, the, the looks of them are significantly different now. Um, in the, the lab space, we have options to see all the different types. Um, they function the same, but now we're catering to consumers to have them look nicer. They don't have to look ugly. This wouldn't be in your living room. That's right. Uh, this could be right beside your hot water heater. Uh, in a small mechanical space that would take up about maybe one foot by one foot of space um, with a little bit of area to service it, but you wouldn't see much more than a standard floor tile for space. Um, that's negligible, yeah. right? And, you know, with concealed sprinkler heads and all the different options, um, you can have specially uh, painted uh, cover plates. Yeah. So if you want to match it with your decor, you can have them match. If you have a... Um, Different styles, wood finishes in your house, you can have them custom painted to make them look like a piece of wooden paneling. Yeah, so they're gonna blend in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What's the cost? It's 2021 right now, going sure. into going into the year 2022 coming up. Yeah. What's the cost for um, a new home build for uh, uh, say a 2,000 square foot home for uh, residential sprinklers? Well, that's a tough one to say per square foot. Yeah. Um, what they'll normally say is as a percentage of the, of the house cost, okay. the total house cost. Because if you have a 2,000 square foot home, what type of finishes do you have? What type of finishes would you want to have, say, that would match for the sprinkler system? Um, the rule of thumb uh, that the, our industry uses is about 1.5% uh, of the total house cost would be what the sprinkler system cost would be. And I think we know that you know, houses can vary significantly um, around the world and how they're constructed and how the finishes look like, but the rule of thumb is uh, one and a half percent of the total house cost. So, you know, if you've got something that is larger in size with, you know, some nicer enhancements to it, uh, keep that same percentage and it'll work out to give you a rough cost. Great. Right. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks for being with us here today, Scott. You're welcome. And um, yeah, and I really appreciate the partnership we've had and the partnership we'll continue to have moving forward right. and uh, really appreciate your help with that uh, subdivision as well. Well, like I said, uh, my, my love for Central York is because I'm a resident of Newmarket Aurora. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you've got, uh, you've got my number on speed dial, as does any other fire department that needs that type of support. Um, there are lots of great subject matter experts on residential fire sprinklers um, throughout the country. And uh, if someone had the interest to give me a call, I'd gladly help them out. But the collaboration was with a lot of great minds, not just one. So reach out to HFSC, reach out to you know passionate activists like yourself, and there's going to be no better win than me sharing the information and you sharing the information so that it becomes more commonplace uh, and the Hollywood myths get dispelled as quick as we can. All right, great. Thanks so much, Scott. Great. Thanks. Thanks.